Good morning and welcome to the Beef and Barnsey Show, back on a regular edition. As usual, I am Barnsey and joined by my co-host, Lean Beef Stew. How are you this morning? I'm a little tired. My uh, my wife got back at about one o'clock last night, so I had to go and uh, run over to the airport and pick her up. Um, and all her cash from uh, her bracket winnings. Oh yeah, yeah. She was rolling in it at the lady at the ladies' championships. <laughs> rolling in it. That that that's what they say. You got to fire in. So uh, so yeah. For seven thirty seven fifty. Sorry. 730, 750, 750? Uh yeah, close. Yeah. Seven uh seven seven thirteen, I think it was. Uh seven thirty-seven, seven forty-five. But for those of you who've been living under a rock, let me uh let me share my screen. Uh where are we at? Uh, I've got so many things I open at the minute that it's not helping me. I should have <laughs> I, I should have thought this through. There she is. So um, here is my wife, and I am completely butchering this. But there we go. So this is the uh, first shot in the tenth using a Zen. She was very much matching in teal. She it, that's teal is the way to go, you know. Uh, we, but she's she's very uh, color coordinated. So here we go. So if you're going to get it done, that was definitely the way to do it. They were three pretty much no doubters right there. Um, she said the uh, the one in the twelfth. She said, "quote unquote." I threw that one awful. I was like, nah, "I think you've been a little harsh on yourself." I think getting it one board further right isn't really considered awful. Um, but, you know, yeah, well, and she put it on them and, you know, like I say, everybody gets all fired up about, and I've seen some posts and they're kind of ridiculous. I think all the scores are ridiculous last week and they're uh, the scoring pace is the scoring pace. Once you know what it is. Oh, I thought you were. I thought you were going to say that. Uh, that the biggest controversy that Tina caused was that some people were disappointed her shorts were too uh, were too short. Oh well. Tina said, "Man, it's 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 been a minute since I've been called a hussy." <laughs> I I did see the one post about you know what's wrong with these shorts versus the skirt or something, and they're both in the men's stop, and I stopped myself short of commenting on it, and then I'm not going to now. So. Uh, it's really simple. If you don't want to follow the rules of the men's championships, pull the women's. You can wear what you want. It's fine. Yeah. So, and the thing of equality, I mean, I'm a little upset I can't pull in the women's championships, and then I could wear shorts. And everybody wants to see that. So, <laughs> yeah. Hate is going to hate. Yeah. You know. So, um, <laughs> so while we're on the video track, um, while I was up at nationals, I, um, I was bowling uh, the bowlers journal and mm -hmm. I managed to pick up a uh, partner who bowled significantly better than I did. Thankfully, he was also bowling with AJ Chapman at the same time. So, um, let's just quickly, uh, I'll ask for in a video mood. Um, Alan Riley. There we go. <laughs> uh, for the record, I do not want to see Barnes. Fair enough. Uh, nobody does. And and that's why those rules exist. It's not for – I don't even know who made the post. Uh, a very petite, you know, attractive young woman, and she looked fine in shorts or skorts or pants or whatever she wore. She was going to look fine in. But it's made for people like uh, – well, for people who don't – for like Alan, for, existent, for example. You know. I mean, for me, I'm like – once they allow people to wear jeans, I don't feel like they've got a dress code, but, you know, there we go. <laughs> no. um, so uh, here is Matt Anderson. Uh, his last shot of uh, his front 11 here at the Bowler's Journal using a black hammer. Before. He was pretty happy about it. I gave him a bit of a hard time. He's still going. 
His teammates are over here, but he's still going. He left you guys now. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. And this was game one. <laughs> So uh, it seems that urethane is in play at the Orleans. That is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick. Uh, we just didn't really have time. Like we, I got in Monday night and I flew up Friday morning, so it just didn't it didn't work out this time, unfortunately. That is a tournament at Bolden a lot. Where is Rick this year? I believe he's over at Gold Coast. He's at Gold Coast. The Bullish Journal's at the Orleans. Um, uh, Rick, go ahead and post on some of your information. I think you do a good job out there. And and so, uh, you know, people need to know where things are at. Uh, Touche. There you go. <laughs> um, the thing that was really cool um, for, uh, for Matt was that um, he, shoot, he shot the 300 the first game. And then he bowled 219 with like the one strike on the one lane. You know, the the old oh, yeah, yeah. He basically bowled Dutch 200, but he caught the one strike for a triple or for a double. And then however yeah. it went down. And uh, he managed to Houdini. That one strike was the one he needed for the strike pot on that lane. <laughs> and then the last game, his reaction was like awful. Like he really needed to get out of that ball. Um, Hey, Coley, how are we doing? Wow. Excited for the uh, Final Four this weekend. Which is what we're here for today. And, um, so it took a step up already. Yeah, he uh, he managed to Houdini his way into uh, a five-bagger at the end. And uh, we let him bowl a 10 frame. And he was pumped because he'd shot 300. So, you know, whatever. Still right. like riding the high. And I go, hey, dude, you hit the stripe jackpot. And he's like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> so that was that 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 was pretty awesome. Um AJ had a really good last two games. Uh and they took over the lead. Um uh with um I think they shot 14 uh 1450. So that was a pretty nice uh pretty nice effort. Uh all right, real quick, let's talk about uh the giveaway and and what we're talking what we're looking at today before we get to the playoffs. Yeah, so uh, it's been a while. We're gonna do a giveaway. We're gonna do the uh, we're, we're gonna do the easy one. All you have to do is share this video. Maybe tag a couple of your friends. Um, let's let's get out. Uh, let, let's get out. Uh, represent the Beef and Barnsey show, and we will. Uh, find a way to put all of the names of the people who shared the video into a uh, into a drawing, and we're going to give away a Honey Badger Intensity. Is that correct, Christopher? It is correct. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll throw in a couple of uh, Beef and Barnsley t-shirts to the people who tag uh, the most friends. So um, get sharing. Um, good work. I appreciate it. Um, get Sharon and we will get that out. Um, we'll do, we'll let you know who won at the start of next week on the show. Um, I think that we're going to have a show on Tuesday. Um, so we will, um, we, so, we will get that in play. So, um, yeah, playoffs recap for sure. And then anything else that happened. Um, yeah. all right. And then just down below, uh, some comments in the chat about uh, hoodies and different things. This is where you go to get those, beefandbarzy.com, a uh, bunch of new apparel there. And uh, it's pretty sharp, actually. So. Oh, let, let us know. Would you like to see polo shirts added to the uh, the Beef and Barnsley collection? Um, yes, Greg, I believe we go up to uh, – I, I, I'm pretty sure we've got fours. I think you can get to four, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we've got the front four. I'm not sure about bigger than the front four, um, but we do have a Castlemaine 4X. We might not have a Yahtzee. <laughs> Ham bones are, are in play, though. Yeah. Rob yeah. Stone would be proud of us. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> go for it. Hopefully, they'll all like the Beef and Barzi page. There you go. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Maybe we should release that week one when Zach Wilson spends the entire time on his ass. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh... Uh... Oh, nice, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try and put something together. Uh... Yeah, Big Mike was supporting the tea last night. Um uh, I uh I I got a photo. Um uh I'll post it later. But yeah, poor Big Mike. He was uh he was uh he was representing last night. Uh there we go. Very nice. Very nice. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh they actually had a pretty good show after the uh after the a uh, um after the initial confusion of who bowled who in the playoffs. Um, uh, it was in the previous rounds. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, before we get into the playoffs, let's, uh, let's have a word from one of our sponsors, uh, Mark Baker. He would. Uh... Mark Baker here. Are you struggling with your game? Do you need another set of eyes? Is there that one thing in your game you just can't fix? Please let me help you. Go to markbakerbowling.com, click on virtual lessons, and follow the three easy steps. Remember, you can live anywhere in the world, and with virtual lessons, I can help you. Look forward to seeing your videos. Thank you. So there we go. Um, I want to thank Mark Baker and also Fire Lake Bowling Center for uh, for being a sponsor of the show. They're Helping us out, and uh, and we surely appreciate it, and we appreciate those who who help them out in return. So, uh, well, here you go. Yes, I believe we we're going to work on some squishy polos too, so um, we can get so they can be properly less good uh, out in public. So, yeah, you could be. But you could be anywhere in the world. Oh God, would stop. <laughs> um, hashtag Camp Bakes. Yeah, he just he just finished up another successful one in Vegas. Um, so, and there you go. Mark Baker's the real deal. Got one less with him, and my average went up ten pins. Never missed another single pin after those. Well, I need to re revisit that one then um, as well. So. Uh, MarkBakerBowling.com, Sebo, good friend, known him a long time. So uh, everything is all right, man. Hope all is good with you. And now we should go to the playoffs. And PBA playoffs. I think we can start with the busted bracket edition. Uh, uh yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, for everybody wanting to know, uh, the first, the semifinals are 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday. Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, we've got Frankie against Troop. We've got Ascona against Cooley. Um, it's going to be kind of kind of a little bit interesting um, with the way the fresh and burn has gone. Um, Kyle being the number one seed, as he should, has had the advantage of bowling both his matches on fresh. He'll continue to bowl on fresh. Um as Kona has actually bowled both of his rounds so far on fresh, Cooley's actually bowled both of his rounds on burn, for whatever that means. But it's actually – it makes quite a big difference when you uh, look at the scores because um, I just did a quick thing with the averages for the players. Mm -hmm. So um, Frankie is averaging uh, right around 226, but on the fresh, he's averaging 252. Uh, yeah, he's cool. a, Poor man on the burn. He, so. he, he took a bit of a pounding uh, on the burn last weekend. Um, ironically, it was on Kyle's burn, so maybe that's something we should look towards. Uh, Kyle's averaging uh, right around two thirty six, um, bowling both matches on the fresh. Um, but he didn't. He, he was a little shaky the uh, first round. He shot four forty, uh, five hundred the last round. So. I think he found something that he kind of liked, I you know, his eye-wise. Mm -hmm. um, as Kona actually has the highest average, he shot 950 for his uh, two rounds. Um, so he's averaging right around 237. And then uh, and then Cooley um, has bowled both matches on burn. Um, so that's kind of impressive. Although one of his rounds, which unfortunately for him was when he had the highest, was when they didn't bowl on the blue oil. 
Um, but he shot nine nine sixteen, so he's averaging you know two twenty nine. So <coughs> um, it's uh, it, it's definitely interesting. Um, yeah, Sibo, I think that's a good catch. They got they're getting tight down the right lane, and, and whoever figures out the right lane, almost every match has has been the one to go ahead and, and win. And uh, uh, topography most likely has a big part of that. Uh, anytime one the two lanes separate like that, that's pretty likely. And so, just another chance, uh, another uh, challenge, and and. Once you bowl multiple games on the same pairs, I think that gets a little easier to identify, and then and then it's on it's on the players to figure out how to manage it. So, yeah, I mean, it just it really looks like that that right lane does get like just awful low, um, uh, and I guess that's not something that Frankie probably needs to worry about um, with him bowling on fresh. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that goes down. Um, yeah, I mean, can't say in both matches should be on fresh for the final four. Um, I feel like that's the mat the time it's least likely to both be on fresh, um, because that's the live show. So, um, yeah, it is live. So, yeah, um, this is pretty funny based on our conversation in Tampa. Are you sure Cooley is not Dom's long lost brother? To be honest, since we made that comparison, um, Cooley has been on fire. Sam is a little way more like Dom than Dom. <laughs> yeah. Um, one quick plug. Um, if you're looking to um, head out, if you're heading out to Nationals and you're looking for some team jerseys, um, head over to Coolwick. They have some quick ship jerseys available. Um, if you use Beef Stew 10, you will get 10% off. Um, so support the people who support us. Um, they have some pretty cool designs um in the quick ship section and uh, you should be able to get those out to you and they go from very small to very giant <laughs> so i'm pretty <laughs> sure they've got a shirt for everybody <clears throat> yeah so the first match then I, even though it will be on the burn i'd like to talk about that one first the the, the Ascona match and the Cooley match uh in the comments who do you, who do you like there and then we'll discuss I, I, Sam is the ultimate wild card for me because when he strikes, he strikes so much. And he does, I think, have a little bit of advantage because he's already bowled two matches on the burn while Ascona has not. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Ascona isn't scared of a strike. Um, and is uh, it really wouldn't surprise me if that match was actually higher scoring um, because kind of one of those deals is like <laughs> – uh, <laughs> He has actually done that once. I think JT. He has a few times, actually. Yeah. Um, nobody knew who he was, though. So, <laughs> well, the pants did give it away. It's a little. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I just feel like um, if they were bowling somebody who was more established, for want of a better description, I think that maybe the nerves might come into it when they're in the final four. But actually, bowling each other, I think they're going to look across the lane and be like. You know, that guy's in the same position as me. Right. Neither one will be particularly intimidated, although as kind of seems to handle that stuff fairly well. And that's the biggest change in Cooley is that it is that he had some meltdowns in the past uh, when he went up against the big guys. And he seems to have gotten over that mental hurdle uh, for himself. And he's, you know, he's showing up big. He's making a lot of shows. He's, he's making some great runs to make shows and, uh, uh, you know, he was kind of the hard luck loser twice in a row, uh, the Masters and U.S. Open back to back. And so he's put together a run that's, uh, that's pretty good. Even though they're bowling the fresh and it's going has it, he's so far left. I, he's already where he wants to be. So it, the only question is, will he have to ball down a little bit off of what he used last time? Um, but he was putting the big paw on it. And there's not going to be any traffic where he is because – because uh, Frankie and Kyle won't be anywhere in that zip code. No, no, definitely not. And then the the other part of it is, is though, is is he's been pretty much a huge underdog in both of his matches. You you know, if we were doing bookmakers, 
right. coming into this match, I, I'm really not sure that he isn't the favourite in that match, given his performance in the last two. I mean, it's probably a flip of the coin, but um, maybe that's a slightly different mindset for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if we're going purely off ball reaction, I think he has as good a ball reaction as anybody. Yeah. I mean, the averages show that he's actually the highest average um, for the uh, for the rounds. Um, yeah, I mean, Frankie and Cooley um, are the kings of the roll off. Both winning both their matches in roll offs. Um, yeah. Cooley actually won, um, went roll off, roll off against uh, Svensson. He won a roll off to get into the roll off. So um, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, that that's definitely. I, I I almost feel like that's that's the match that's most likely to be back and forth. I feel like the Troop and Frankie match because they're so different the way they're going to attack the lanes. One of them is going to have the right solution. Um, yeah, I just well, that, they're different skill sets. They may end up attacking lanes pretty closely, but one has you know a lot of axis rotation and 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 just thumb in it, and the other one is much in, more end over end and higher rev rate and much higher speed as well. Um, yeah. I mean, Kyle's looked, uh, Ky Ky Kyle, like, you know, people have been saying how confident Kyle's been looking, but Kyle looked pretty confident at that, um, at the, um, the super slam until he wasn't. So um, I think for Kyle, I think if he gets off to a good start in that match, I think the first couple of frames of each of those games is going to be huge for Kyle. Frankie is much less emotional about it. And he's much, it's much easier for Frankie to dig himself out of the hole. If, you know, if he gets behind in the match, I just, I, I don't know that that's the case for Kyle. Like Kyle's fantastic as a front runner. Like when he won the playoffs, uh, so he went, when he won the, uh, the players, he was the number one seed and he did get off to a little bit of a bad start, but I, I, I feel, I felt like overall though, that whole tournament, he just, he felt like that was his to win in that bowling center. He, he'd had some success with that, uh, with those summer tournaments there as well. Now, now as the last televised title this year, do you feel like that moves the needle for either one of these guys in the semifinal match, does the winner take a front spot for the player of the year, or do they have to win the final also? Well, I think I think the thing is, is I I, I feel like I feel like, and this might be just being a little biased because it's always hard to tell, but I feel like if Frankie beats Kyle again but doesn't win, that's more of a big deal for Frankie than it is for Kyle because Frankie already beat Kyle one on one. So if if they've had the two big matches and Frankie won both of them. To me, it feels like that's a bigger fillet for Frank than it is for Kyle if Kyle was to win this and then not win. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is um, it's it's crazy that one of those guys, it looks like he's going to uh, beat Walter Ray's um, earnings record. Um, it seems like it's, 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 it's going to get there. So, um, yeah. yeah it's crazy, actually. Uh, yeah, because when uh, when uh, when Walter Ray put that up, that looked like Mount Vesuvius. <laughs> yeah. that, that was a big number. <laughs> it was, well, you know, it was a different world, and and uh, you know, it it certainly has changed. Uh, and, and to do it in the in a year with a with all the other things going on and affecting Bolero is uh, it it's even more far fetched, honestly. That, that there's that much of money available and that. A couple of guys, either one of them could get to it. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, that's that's the thing. It's not even so much that it's just one guy who's an outlier. It's like there's two or three that could actually make a run at it. So yeah. Well, I guess not now, but uh yeah, it's it's kind of well uh something we haven't touched on and then we'll get back to class real quick. But uh that's a great point, Brian. I, I'm not wearing shocker gear today. Uh and that is on me. But uh, my shocks, they uh both the men and the women won uh, won the nationals, the team nationals. Uh, Sorry, my wife's uh, my wife just off camera throwing up. Oh no, well, I know. Well, I mean, they've heard of those national titles. They just haven't, 
gotten any of them. Uh, much like myself, to be honest. So I, I can't <laughs> cast too many stones. But uh, yeah, the ginger spin biscuit finally, uh, he finally lived up to uh, his reputation and threw some monster shots. And the team all kind of, sometimes the, uh, the, the road uh, less traveled is worth the, the ride at the end. And, and they went, they went through some bumpy tournaments and bowled not very good in a few of them, uh, exceptionally bad in a couple, and then ended up, uh, uh, they ended up being pretty good at the end of the year at the, at the right time. And so happy for them. The women bowled fantastic. Uh, Kepner or Keplinger, Alec Keplinger, uh, made the singles finals, uh, was an honorable mention, all American. And then Madison Janik was, uh, the player of the year for the women. So, uh, Good year for the Shocks. They, uh, they, she also struck out in the 10th to win in game five, uh, something West Texas could have looked into a few times, and uh, they got a few of those titles. Uh, uh, <laughs> a couple of times. Uh, you, you, you want to come in, sweetheart? Like, so T Tina's going to come across, and uh, I can maybe share the seat if you want to look. Yeah, Madison's great. She's going to bowl the Lucy with Pat. You're Pat. getting a finger, and it's not the number one. Uh, yeah, it, I doubt you're putting two fingers up at me. So, <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on your bowling. You did. The, you had a very nice uh, couple of days there at the women's championships. I did. Zone baby, uh, Zen baby. That's right. That's right. It was even good enough. I almost made the show with that thing. That's how good that thing is. So, I mean, I, and you, there were a lot of them going down the lane, a lot. So it's very popular and. It just, I mean, even in the article that they wrote, like it goes through the pins, like no other ball has ever gone through the pins. I think it just keeps going. Shiny balls. Walking, and walking commercial. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. I, I took a shot of Ryan last night. I sent it to Kip Gantz again. I said, I think I need to start using him in the videos instead of me. Uh, it, <laughs> they look a little better when he throws them. So maybe we'll start doing some duos. I can do it with Ryan and, uh, and you two can do the videos together. And we could, <laughs> yeah, I did almost bowl 300 again, though, and that was with the Axiom Pearl. So, <laughs> got to give that one a little bit of love too. Very nice. That's Ryan's other other favorite in that range. So. Who tried to tell me I he that wasn't going to fit in my six ball arsenal, and I was like, look, I know I'm not as smart as you. I don't know everything about all the balls, but all I know is that one is one that I'm most oh, comfortable boy. with. So here's my PSA to people. Always make sure you take what you're most comfortable with, even though you don't exactly know what the best options are. <laughs> well, the one thing about that six bar all show, when you're picking out your favorite balls, if you're going to go ahead and bowl on something that's fairly easy, those will probably work pretty good. <laughs> bowling the league with. So, and so it yeah. seems like they were a little bit high scoring. You, you shot a big number, 21, almost 2200, right? 2195. Yeah. And what place is that? Fifth. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the last night, she had a couple of the records, and they're all going to get broken this week. So they had the high four person team game, and her and Carolyn had the record for doubles for that was about 12 or 15 years ago, and they got smashed. Yeah. The only thing, the only thing I would say about that doubles record is um, they smashed everybody who was there, too. It wasn't yeah. like, there was a 1520, a 1530, and they happened to bowl 1560. For a while, they were winning by 160. Um, there was some pretty good scores uh, yesterday in doubles. Um, but, yeah, over, overall, the scores have been pretty high. Um, Shalin um, put a nice little number on them yesterday, a 2255, I think she took over all events. And um, to all those people who say that you need to bowl in a team who can break them down for you, uh, I call bullshit because Shalin bowled with three ladies who shot less than she shot combined for their 27 games. So um, <laughs> yeah, she literally put her name on a sub board to bowl and, you know, found the three little old ladies who needed somebody just to fill their spot. And it was pretty entertaining to yeah. see all the dash, 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 while she just kept striking. Yeah, one point she, we, we talked about it because it was on live scoring. Charlene had the front six, so effectively 180 in the sixth. And the other three ladies' scores did not add up to 180. In the <laughs> yeah. 
yeah it was um it was pretty cool and that's that that's what that's one of the cool things about the sub board and stuff like um i know that um i know that belmer went out there put his name on the sub board because he was he was asking me he actually spoke to me about that a little bit and i told him i said i think it'd be really cool and he goes do you not think that it'll just cause me more trouble and it's worth you know people complain i go no I, th I think that the people who you end up bowling with will appreciate it so much that it'll be worth it in the long run. And like, and Belmo said that he had a really good time with his group. You know, he just, he, he just put his name on the sub board and just picked up a group. And sometimes that's the most fun you can have. You get to meet, you know, four people who clearly are, uh, are fans of bowling because you can't, you can't want to go and put yourself through that at men's nationals. If you don't, if you're not really dedicated to it. So yeah, definitely fun. I almost feel like back to the scores that, you know, that kind of needs to be an asterisk next to the team event because there was only one team on a pair. And to me, that makes a huge difference. <laughs> that makes a huge difference. Like even in league, you know, we only have one team on a pair and I'm averaging 10 pins more than I would normally average if it was five man team, two teams on a pair. Um, so I think that makes a big a Big difference with transition. That's my uh, that's my new hashtag. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're gonna start announcing me as uh, Stu Williams, uh, husband of uh, te West Texas A and M standout Tina Williams. Nobody even remembers that. That was so long ago now. <laughs> well, I didn't remember you there, but you know it's okay. You, you're you're the lady in teal. Yep. Oh. Yep, I match the entire stadium. I fit in with the decor, and I got a. Uh, um, I did one little bonus post on Instagram of a fortune cookie. It was funny, actually. Before we bowled, I got a fortune cookie that said, um, "A pleasant surprise is in store for you." And there you go. It was very pleasant. I'm just glad I took advantage of them when they were a little bit on the more softer side, and they're always on the soft side at Ladies Nationals, but even more so. So, thank you, Linda. Yeah, we're, we're beef and barnsy. This is the the wives are the desserts, right? So <laughs> the sweet ones of the barn. Yes. Right. So, so so do you have any advice for ladies heading out there? What would you say? What what's 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 your like if you were to uh, say or, or do, you, do you not want to help anybody out now because you want to keep your scores? <laughs> well, of course I do because I still want to say in the top five. But you know, I mean, pretty consistently, what you needed to do was kind of make for the most part, eight kind of be your out of bounds. And what you needed was just like a slight little bump. So maybe like 12 to 10, 12 to nine, 12 to, you know, eight. And that was almost, if you watch all the videos that they posted of, you know, the honor scores that they took videos of, that's pretty much where everybody is playing. I mean, strong balls, shiny balls, weaker balls, everybody was pretty much in that same zone. Um, so that's what I would, that would be my. Um. <laughs> well, people kept asking me why I'm not bowling the Queens and I wanted to steal, I wanted to steal our hashtag that said hashtag all out, but I'm technically not all out because Linda is all out. Like she just doesn't bowl anymore. I'm just choosing not to compete at that competitive level. I thought you had a pre pretty anymore I for a had, while. I thought you had a pretty good answer for why you weren't bowling. Oh yeah. That I turned 40 and I got my face kicked in by a 16 year old and I said, yeah, that's, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need that stress in my life. I've got plenty of other things like this <laughs> to stress about. So six a whole bunch of guys in the US Open the ideal. Masters. A whole bunch of guys in the US Open the Masters that feel the same way right right about now after Spencer and Andy Nair, Andrew Nair. So yeah, yep. for for a little while it looked like Jillian was gonna do the same thing to Tommy Jones, and then Tommy remembered it was the US Open and he always comes twelfth at the US Open every year. <laughs> He doesn't miss the finals there ever, it seems like. Oh, he... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well... <laughs> yes. Okay, dear. Well, congratulations on thank your success. Thank you. And thank you if you reached out to me. I know I said it on Facebook, but thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you guys reached out. I appreciate it. All right. See you later. You, yeah, real quick. Who's your pick for the finals? Uh, final Ranking. four. Ranking Kyle, who wins? I mean, Real quick. It's a no-brainer. <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to say anybody other than Frankie, even though I got some love for, for Sweet Tea as well. So, <laughs> Look, your, your ex-doubles partner says, 
15 is leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cooley and Ascona, who wins? Oof. Celebrity death match. Cooley wins. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna give I'm I'm gonna give that one that one to Cooley. I say okay, so Cooley and Frankie. Who's your winner? Oh Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can't you can't cheer for the shackle dragger. I didn't say I was gonna cheer for him. I just I'll I'll we'll be a house of I'll go with I'll go with Cooley. She, she's going with Cooley. Yeah. So um, there you go. So true Pascona final it is then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Got to somebody has All to right. do a real job. Got to go back. <laughs> uh, uh, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Well, and I assume you feel the same. You're you're going to go with Frankie for the win. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's necessarily from any logic, other than like you know he's my guy. But um, yeah. but yeah, he. Um, I just feel like Frankie's just in that moment um, in time where he just he just finds a way to win, or the other guy finds a way to lose, bowling against him. Like he shouldn't have beat Bill O'Neill last weekend. And like you know, I was listening to Big Mike bemoan how lucky Frankie was, but Bill had plenty of opportunities to step on the throat, and he didn't. And uh, the first game, he almost he almost let Frankie win the first game, also. So um, Frankie Frankie is definitely taking advantage of good things happening to him at the minute. But you know, that's what happens when it's you know when you're on that run. Yeah. You just find a way, and it you seems like in a lot of matches you shouldn't really be in, and that's you know, I mean that part about Norm is pretty accurate. That he he's not bowling himself out of matches. He's he's hanging around, hanging around, hanging around, and he's been forcing the guys are letting him hang around and get it down to a one shot game. And he, he's he's a shot maker. He's as good a shot maker as anybody. You know, he's in the top very small percentage of the tour guys at that. So. Um, and he yeah. gets on, uh, you know, he's been on so many shows. He's certainly comfortable in the situation right now. Yeah, it'll, de it'll definitely be interesting. I, I also think that Frankie, um, Frankie's really good at game planning with with Sean and Jim and whatever um, mm -hmm. about sticking on his game plan. So, like, he doesn't that this weekend um, was really odd watching him bowl because that was one of the first times I've ever seen him be like really all over the place and indecisive. Like Frankie's not really like that. Like I, we've told the story before when like Frankie will wheel out a three ball bag and leave them like at the other end of the center. And I'm like, why are you leaving a bag? Well, cause I'm there game four. <laughs> like you'll be ready yeah. for those balls by then. Yeah. He, he, he threw that one out. That was something like, huh? He's, yeah. he's in a different game than we are right now. <laughs> yeah, and and but that but that's all about having confidence in what you're doing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it was also the difference in having something that worked, which is where you and I struggled a little bit in that tournament. Was uh, we had a few game plans, just none of them played out. Yeah, in a, in a predictable way, and his was working pretty well. So, uh, all right, well, uh, tune in. You said Saturday's eleven a.m. Eastern. Saturday's 11 a.m. Eastern, and then Sunday is um, 2 p.m. Eastern. But that's on Big Fox. The final is on Big Fox. There you go. FS1 on Saturday, Big Fox on Sunday. 11 a.m. Saturday, 2, yeah. 2 p.m. <laughs> Eastern times so on Sunday. Uh, you know, and that should be – these should be great matches, I think, really. you got it, It's very interesting. It's very much NC – double a type as far as you, you got the you got the favorites and a real chance for uh the winner of the frankie the frankie uh troop match to take a stranglehold on the player of the year uh provided they can win that match but they still will probably have to win the overall to really separate um, yeah and i mean there's still like i say there's still a lot of, there's still uh there's still actually some real tournaments left like 
when I say real tournaments, I'm not necessarily being derogatory towards this. I just mean like a traditional tournaments. I should probably use yeah. that word. Yeah, it just it's interesting because the whole membership votes and instead of just the tour guys. Sometimes when you don't see it, they don't end up counting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do feel like, and the money will be significantly less for those. I believe, uh, maybe not, but uh, yeah, I I just feel like the. I feel like the title number makes a big, like, is a big deal unless, unless the person. I don't really see the people who are in it being um, campaigners, so to speak. Yeah, that's probably fair. Like, I mean, people know what I'm talking about when I say that. Like, <laughs> there are certain players who are very good at convincing people that they should have been player of the year because of X, Y, and Z. And those guys are often quite successful, especially if the ball company ends up backing them. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe check out the uh, 2012 player of the year race. Um, That might give you a a hint. Um, If you looked at the numbers, just the pure numbers, that might not necessarily say anything, but, also, when the things happen, like whoever wins the last tournament that's on TV tends to have a pretty big advantage, unless it's Dom. You know, it's 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 because all the stuff that happens in the fall will count for this year's uh, Player of the Year race, and now you know we're we're in May. Yeah, and we're not going to vote on it for seven more months, and I some of that. You know, Dom got hit by a little bit, and it wasn't it wasn't nearly that long uh, from there to the to the vote. But yeah, I feel like sometimes people just forget. And yeah, I feel like Dom's was one of those where because he wasn't one of the people they were talking about to be Player of the Year going into the last couple of events, people kind of forgot that he'd already won a title, a pretty big one at that in the Japan Cup. So when he won the U.S. Open, people were like, well, it was Anderson and Simonson and Tackett who we were deciding between. Yeah. And it was like, well, he's got just as good a resume as any of those. It's just he hasn't been in the discussion prior to winning this one. And that would be interesting, too, because effectively the playoffs is another version of Japan Cup. It's a 16-person invitational that you qualified for. And, you know, you, you earned your spot there. Yeah. The difference is that one doesn't get seen by anybody. And so we knew he won. Uh huh. And he beat all the main competitors for, you know, for the player of the year to win it. But sometimes the membership doesn't see that, you know, the other 4,000 people that have access to vote on it. And so, uh, yeah. And um, uh, yeah, you know, and, and effectively, it, it'll be interesting because this is very much like that. And, way shorter format and so in my mind would count less than winning say the toc and that but i don't think everybody sees it that way at the end you're going to look at it seven months from now and go well the money's this you know points is this average head-to-head whatever stats people come up with and by then they'll they'll likely not even remember (laughs) who bowled who and what and what bowled what and so uh yeah the extra wins Will likely matter, you know, if, if two guys end up being fairly close in money. Yeah, definitely. And then, of course, on top of that, um, I think that average plays a big part, but I can't really find the stats right now. Um, I'm having a quick look on the website, but I couldn't quite find it. Yeah. I feel like average is one of those that's the old school guys tend to have a little look at. They yeah, kind of like that be, this year maybe more than most though it might actually matter because you most everybody's bowled a very similar number of games. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll still, re- I still can't forget. <clears throat> we bowled in Fountain Valley one year, and it was a sixteen-game round robin, and um, and Chris missed the cut by like one spot or two spots, and he turns to me and he goes, "Well, that's me screwed for winning average." <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the tournament where Jesse Buss averaged. I think he averaged two hundred and forty nine and missed my, missed the TV show by two hundred. 
because yeah. he didn't win any games in match. I think he won two games in match play and he shot 300 both times. <laughs> yeah, he had the, the, old, the ultimate bad beat record. And... <laughs> yeah, I think he went 2-14 and 14, and Bill was like taking pictures. He goes, have you ever seen this? The guy's averaging 200. He might have been averaging 248 or something. Whatever it was. It was a lot. 200 out. <laughs> Uh, if Cooley wins the playoffs, does he have a dark horse shot at POI? In my opinion, no, not without winning. I think the, they'd I probably think have to win one or two of the the summer. I mean, it, it it would keep him in play because then he would have a big check, which money wise would help out considerably. But uh, because those other guys have won so much money, and money ultimately gets looked at pretty significantly on the stats. Mm -hmm. I think it's really hard for him to get a majority vote, regardless of how much better or worse he's bowled. I mean, his average finish this year is going to be probably pretty outstanding. Uh, yeah. The one thing stats exactly because he's, you know, he's missed two shows by finishing sixth, and some of those other things are pretty, there's some pretty cool stats that Lane talk comes up with every once in a while that EJ one year, like Belmo's average finish was like sixth and EJ was ninth. The one year it was yeah it's ridiculous it's really amazing to finish that high every single week um, um just one thing uh that that could play a part um we they have the um the tour finals which is another title only eight guys and i believe that vi did vi scrape in as the eighth guy uh but frankie and kyle are in it but doherty isn't Oh, because of the, uh, yeah. Is my understanding. Now, I might have got that completely wrong. I just don't remember him being um, on that. Uh... Well, sometime in 2022, R2 Sports will get the website up and running, and then we'll be able to look back and know. Um, until then. Right. Here we go. So I, I th this is right up here. This is just okay. my, I was correct. Doherty didn't make it. Chris Vi made it as eighth. So... During the in those two tournaments. Not, yeah. So that not, goes not. for Cooley as well, with not being involved in that. That's that's another tournament that's going to be front and center on TV. Yeah. Yeah, and you know where I stand on that. I'm a get off get off my lawn guy about uh, exhibition tournaments counting as a uh, as titles and and for a player of the year thing. I just uh, that one's a little tough for me, but uh, but it will count for for people, and so it you know anything on TV certainly matters. Unfortunately, probably even more than than that run uh, the run of of summer the summer tour basically. So, um, any feel for who wins the Queens this year? Can Derek? Hall? I think that Daria can win. Uh, Dasha, her name is actually Daria. So for all those people who told me I was wrong, when she was a kid, she was Daria, and that's when I met her. So Dasha <laughs> could win, yes, because I feel like she, her and O'Keefe can win basically any tournament they enter at the minute. But I think that you should look to some of the people who curve it a little more this year over at the stadium. I think that I might be wrong, but when I looked at the pattern and knowing what I'd seen at the stadium – uh, recently, I think they're going to play a little softer. I think the scores could be reasonably high. Um, I think a dark horse might be Liz Culkin. Um, Liz is definitely not afraid of throwing a strike. She's won a, uh, she's won a major already in the U.S. Open. He bowled pretty well um, last week or this week, whatever, uh, for the Open Championships. So if I was picking someone... I would go with Liz Culkin. Wow. Now, that's just somebody different that nobody else would have picked, so I'm, I'm going with Liz. Well, um, not exactly. Now, Super dark horse. She is she was on Team USA. In one no, of, no, but what I'm saying is is I yeah. bet if I asked 10 people, right, you probably wouldn't be. But she's certainly able to take advantage of, of uh, you know, if there is a little bit more room there and be able to move in and left of everybody, which is part of the deal when you're bowling matches head-to-head. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. So, I mean, that's um, there's somebody else who's bowled really well at the stadium. Lindsay's been bowling, has bowled fantastic at the stadium as well. Um, 
Uh, your wife is picking Verity. I think it's because they're about the same size. <laughs> Verity's been bowling awfully good here lately. Her, her time yeah. off seems to have inspired her. <laughs> and uh, she's she's bowling up to her uh, her level of talent here as of late. So, um, A lot of people are pulling for Verity. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, Maria's, Maria, Maria's very good at the Queens as well. Um, she had a good, she had a good run out at the, uh, at the women, at the women's championships. So <laughs> dark horse might be Kelly Kulik pulling off of the well again. Yes. Seems like, seems like the break. Um, when I say break, I'm talking about COVID, yeah. um, helped her out to heal up the issues that she had with her ankles and such. Yeah. Um, so nice to see her born well. It kind of it kind of sits a bit weird when they pull up the um, uh, when they pull up the stats and it shows that like Kelly's got like three PWBA titles or whatever it is or oh it's all majors she's won like one since like it came back yeah it, it just looks weird like right. it, it, it's very odd it's a bit like to be honest it's a bit it, it also looks a little strange that Shannon Pulowski right. Like she's got the queens, and it's like she was. She's probably the person who suffered most since it came back because she was she bowled fantastic for the probably the ten years leading up to when the tour came back, and uh, it hasn't the tour hasn't exactly been super kind to the lefties. Um, the women's tour, I, we'll just leave it at that. Jerry Tan might disagree. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I said super kind. Yeah. Uh, a couple of questions real quick. Uh, I don't know. I'll probably end up going out and being on a sub board. If, uh, if at all, I tried to put together a team of over 60s and they determined that over 60 did not. Yeah. They did not supersede the fact that guys who are lifetime PVA members that have not bowled in 40 years uh, still count as PVA members. Why did you ask? So, Will there be a PBA league? It looks like there will not be one for this year. Uh, I have strong reason to believe it will be coming back in 2022. Uh, whether it is in a very large fashion or in a similar fashion, we we don't really know yet. But uh, I almost certainly will be back next year uh, in one way or the other. So, uh, sorry, that wasn't the one. I, uh, I'll be bowling both. So, uh, mixing back and forth, going to Lubbock and Odessa a couple of times with both tours. Uh, I've committed to bowling and Lucy with uh, Dasha. So, uh, let's see if I can – yeah, I'll be missing probably a, a, a Codger stop in there somewhere to bowl that because they overlap. Because um, why wouldn't they? Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Stu, explain not being not being afraid to strike. Uh, I think it's just about it's a it's a mental thing about not being uh, like in my mind anyway. I think like the people who who are used to striking a lot don't let the head get in the way of oh my god I've struck the last twenty shots in a row. It's like Steph Curry when Steph Curry hits five threes to start the game. Anybody else would be like holy shit I've got five threes. Steph Curry's like man I might get fifteen tonight. And that's kind of the, it's just, it's an expectation. Like Adam Bart is a great example. Adam Bart, every time he has the front five, thinks he's going to shoot 300. <laughs> and he does a lot, but it's just because he's so used to it that it's just, it's not even a thing anymore. And that, 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 that's how I look at it anyway. And some of the ladies um, are really good when they're a little soft, it's the same on the guys tour as well. There are some guys who are like, I pick on them a little bit. <laughs> Mike Wolf, when they're a little softer, he is the man. He's not afraid to throw a bunch of strikes. Cooley's not afraid to throw a bunch of strikes either. Yeah. And keep going. Jacob's another guy. Throwing an eight bagger doesn't make him nervous. It's like, okay, well, that's this is what's supposed to happen. Now I'll throw another eight bagger. <laughs> Connected and to her. that way, and Liz is one of those persons that she doesn't get nervous when she starts getting more strikes. When 
like something bad going to happen. It's like, well, I threw 12 in a row. Now I know I can strike 12 more. <laughs> yeah. Liz, Liz had the front 33 in league and went live. Yes. That's stones right there. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Nobody's ever done it <laughs> on the women's side. Let me go live because I'm going to do this. Nobody's ever done it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I've, yeah. I've seen this question a couple of times. Flux Pro versus Space Time Continuum. What did I notice the difference? They both sat in my garage pretty quickly. Um, Space Time Continuum had great numbers, did not roll particularly well. Uh, the Flux Pro was – should have been a flippier version of the solid version, and the solid version, by and large, rolled better for most people, although it was still a pretty decent ball. Uh, by and large, the new balls that are out have have made – I've hung on to a flux solid. The space time continuum did not – had a very short shelf life. Uh, and so uh, it, it's cleaner. It's got a smaller core. It, it, should, it needs a little more friction to be implied, but uh, in general, it did not, it, it, it was pretty smooth while also being shiny. And uh, so it didn't have much life on tour. No. Um, so Over remember, here. share, 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 share. Let's yep. get this going. Um, uh, our video on the Open Championships is still up on YouTube. It's going quite well. If you'd like to see some more content like that, hit the like button over there. Um, we will try and get some more info from people who have been in the next few weeks. We might have a chat with Ryan because I think he's going, is it this week? He's going this weekend. Yeah. Uh, so he'll be there. We've been talking about some things based off of your description of the OC championships. And uh, Thanks, Jake. Uh, you know, and he's going to go based off of that. So for him, it'll be a urethane ball and uh, – what would be four pretty strong balls for you and I, but since he's throwing it, people throwing about 21 miles an hour now and his ball never hooks early. Uh, Axiom Pearl may be his lowest end ball, which seems crazy to me until I watch him bowl and I go, uh, why? You never. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Honey Badger Intensity. Thanks, William. You're the best. <laughs> And um, yeah, and uh, Tina, who knew Tina, Tina and Ryan, Tina had an Axiom Pearl as her weakest ball too. She and took a proton physics too. Now Ryan's going to do a, he's going to take a reality, a phase two, a Zen and an Axiom Pearl along with a Booyah and a rubber spare ball. <laughs> they aren't the future. They are the present. They are on the website. Beefandbonzi.com. Right there. Click in the right corner, click shop, bam. There are a couple of options. Uh, and they're nice. I actually like mine. I'm actually wearing the sweats today, too. The sweats are the sweats are oh, legit. You, you, you got your sweats. Good, good oh, yeah. deal. I did. Good. So, all right. Well, that being said, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, good luck to the guys in the Final Four. Again, 11 a.m. Eastern on Saturday, 2 p.m. on Big Fox on Sunday. Frankie versus Troop in a very uh, influential, potentially influential match on Player of the Year. And then Bracket Buster special, Cooley and Ascona. And the other side could see anything uh, except probably urethane. And, and uh, uh, who knew that Ascona could actually beat us all with not throwing uh, a urethane ball. So uh, he's maybe more legit than anybody knew. I'm telling you what. I sure liked his ball reaction tonight. I think he's the guy to watch. So support those small businesses and uh, those small centers out there. Help them get them through the summer here. And when you get a chance, support the sponsors that support us. We very much appreciate it. Storm, Rotograph, Niner Global, Vice, Coolwick, 3G Shoes, Master, Bowler Smart, Mark Baker, Bowling, and Fire Lake Bowling Center. Uh, there is a spot for you two here if you would like to be a sponsor of the Beef and Barney Show. But until next time, see you next Tuesday. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you later.